In this video, I'll demonstrate some of the basics of the Arnold renderer, which is newly integrated into my 2017. I'm starting with a, an empty scene in Maya, and I'll add a few objects to get started. Now I want to make sure that the Arnold renderer is loaded from Windows, Setting Preferences, Plugin Manager. I'll scroll down and find the M2A plugin. Make sure it's loaded and auto-loaded if you're going to use it continuously. And that should give you an Arnold menu, an Arnold shelf, and access to the Arnold renderer in the render settings. So I've chosen Arnold renderer as my current renderer and I'll try first I'll show the film gate so I can see what I ex should expect to render. And I'll try a render. Now the entire render comes out black. If I look at the alpha channel, I can see the corners of that plane in there, so I, I know that it is rendering. The reason it's coming out black is there are no lights in the scene, and the Arnold renderer, unlike the default Maya software renderer, does not add lights for you. So if I add a light, I'll start with a directional light and turn on interactive lighting in the viewport. I can position my light. I can render and see the scene with the lighting that I added. If on the other hand I added a light source like the point light, it will apparently behave a little bit differently. When I render, you can see that it looks very dark. There's a little bit of light on the sphere on the edge there. But if I move the light farther away from object, you'll see that it gets even darker. Now the reason for that, if I look in the attribute editor, is that Maya lights default to a decay rate of no decay, whereas Arnold lights have the option of constant decay or quadratic decay, and they default to quadratic. So for the, the viewport lighting to reflect what you will see in the render, you have to choose quadratic for the decay rate, and now it looks a lot more like the render did already. Now I can up the intensity of this light and if it still doesn't look bright enough, I can up it even further just by typing in a bigger number. And that'll reset the slider. So I'll duplicate this light and move the copy over a little bit to make the lighting a little more complex. Now there are some other interesting things you can do with the Arnold renderer. One is the physical sky node, and it's easily found in the Arnold shelf. With the physical sky node it creates a sky for you along with a sun, which you can enable or disable. And I can look at this in a new render, and you'll see that the sky ends at the horizon. So if your objects don't extend out to a great distance, you may end up with a scene that looks like the objects end before they meet the horizon. The sky does not go down below the horizon. Now I can change a few other things about the physical sky, but it may actually be easier to, to see what's happening if I use the Arnold render view. The Arnold render view is a semi-real-time renderer 
if it updates, it starts with a low resolution version and then adds in detail as it progresses. I can use this to much more quickly make changes to a scene and see the effect of those changes. And with the physical sky in the scene, it helps me do things like locate where the sun is. It's a little hard to see with that object in the way. So the sun is way up in the sky, but I can change the elevation of the sun. And as I change the elevation of the sun, you can see that the sky gets both darker and tints more towards yellow or orange. And it looks a bit like a sunrise or sunset. There are a few other options like intensity, azimuth for setting the position of the sun along the horizon, or essentially the rotation of the sky dome. Ground albedo for how much light is, ref is sort of reflected into the sky. And I can change the color or tint of the sky if I want to make a really unusual sky. Now, the Arnold renderer also has some options for geometry. One of the things it can do is change the, using the Arnold translator option, I can change this to a mesh light, in which case the mesh appears to not render at all, unless I either up the intensity or exposure of it, in which case I start to see input from that mesh as a light source in the scene. If I want to see the mesh as a light in the scene, there's an option for that as well light visible, in which case I see the mesh again. And there are some other options for geometry that are useful. Under subdivision, I can change the type of the subdivision to get a smoothed mesh so that I don't see uh, poly edges. If that's not smooth enough, I can up the iterations and get an even smoother mesh. And you would see that the edges of this poly object appear more smooth. If I choose none as the type, you can see corners of poly faces. Change it back to Catmull Clark, and I can see that it smooths out nicely. In addition to the standard Maya light types, there are a couple of interesting Arnold types, and one of the most useful I find is the sky dome light. If I create a sky dome light, it defaults to being just white. But if I have any spherical images, I can use those as source for lighting the scene. In order to attach a spherical image as a light. I need to map a file to the color attribute. Then I'll find an image that's prepared already. And you can see that after I've deleted the lights and allow this to render only using the uh, sky dome image, 
I, I get a much more interesting, much more complex result because this is based on a photographic capture of a spherical scene. So those are some of the basics of using the Arnold renderer.